Uzwo, I'm so excited to chat with you about applying AI and helping businesses get the most out of it today because that's what your business does and really covers some fundamentals. But let's start with, tell people a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. So thanks for having me here, Martin, Reina. My name is Uzwal Roy. I am CEO of Scalebuild AI. And at Scalebuild AI, we are building custom AI solutions or even custom software solutions that integrates with businesses and makes them smarter and with the power of AI and data uh, pipelining, we, we actually make businesses much more efficient. And we believe that every business vertical is about to be disrupted uh, using AI. How it will happen will depend from one business vertical to uh, another. And the reason that we are providing custom uh, development and integration solutions to different businesses is because we believe that every business is different and how we integrate AI in these businesses are going to be different. So that's why our company is not providing any off-the-shelf or off-the-rack uh, software solutions. But the way we work with the businesses is that um, we work uh, with the business operations, finance, different teams in the business, and then look at how the entire business process is functioning. So how the whole system is operating. And then we look at where are the places where efficiencies can be unlocked using the power of data and AI. And then uh, if there is an off the shelf solution that already exists, even if we have not built it, but we appreciate that software and it's working, we integrate that, or if there is something that needs to be built from scratch, we build that too. And you have a long history in technology, including having worked for mega corporations like Intel and Micron before you launched your own practice. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes, that's true. So that kind of gave you the education and the training um, to really do what you do in AI today. Yeah. So I actually consider myself lucky to have uh, worked in the chip industry or semiconductor industry because um, when I started working at Micron, I realized that all of these big hyperscaler cloud companies or, you know, like uh, desktop or laptop makers or cell phone makers, they were all the customers. Mm -hmm. And working on different kinds of products, uh, so I actually worked on products that went into like simple general purpose SSDs, all the way to uh, products that went into satellites, rocket ships, uh, automotives, right? So a lot of these electric cars that are coming up now, it literally has computer inside, right? So I, get, I got to work on that. I got to work a lot on the like cutting edge, like high performance computing and basically enterprise cloud division of the business too at both both of these companies and one thing that i realized was uh, i looked at where are the workloads going on so when we talk about uh, the technology nodes shifting and uh, like moving from one technological layer to another one so for example what i mean by that is uh, before the digital systems existed like microprocessor or mi microcontrollers existed uh, we had analog devices, right? Mm -hmm. Even sure. clocks, watches, sure. everything, like a lot of like machines, they were mechanical and analog, right? They were electrical already. So first we had like mechanical, and then mm -hmm. when electricity came, it became like electrical, right? Mm -hmm. But it was still like electromechanical. It was not digital, it was analog. And when the microcontrollers and microchips came, it started becoming digital. And then it had like some level of software, it had firmware, and then the software revolution came, operating systems, personal computing. So I was actually able to see through the whole, you know, the how the technology was shifting. And I'm a big uh, student of history, and I'm especially focused on the like history of technology industry and like how different technological revolutions have come at different periods of time and how it had basically changed everything I mean, the way humanity does everything, mm -hmm. right? So in the pre-fire era, like I'm actually going back to like sure, all the way sure. to the beginning. So before human beings had invented fire, we were living, I mean, of course, without fire, right? Yeah. 
So the way we were eating, the way we were like building things, everything was different because uh, we didn't even believe that uh, fire is something that is under con like human control. Right. Yeah, fire was just like some natural disaster. That happened to us. <laughs> and we would be like, oh, wow, we need to run away from it. Yeah. But uh, as the consciousness grew, um, we realized that, oh, we can actually control it. And we can, first of all, we can cook food. But not just cook food, we can actually build things. Uh -huh. right? So we can heat up metals and then build stuff. We can bend it according to the way that we want. So fire was a pretty, pretty big um, technological shift, right? It was a new technology for human beings and human civilization advanced a lot with fire. Next, uh, equal or, yeah, I would say equal if not bigger, uh, technological revolution was electricity. So when electricity came, a lot of things got electrified, right? Cities started getting electrified, now all the way up to even Wazi is electrified, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, then there was internet and software, which I believe is not as big as fire or electricity, right. but, but that was also right. pretty big. Sure. Right? You can build the software <clears throat> and then internet is your delivery or distribution uh, platform, right? So you, you can build a software company at your home and you can distribute it all over the world, right? Your customers can be everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a new also revolution uh, for uh, human beings and the most current technological revolution that we're seeing is AI. Mm -hmm. So just like when digital revolution came, everything everything that existed pretty much in analog form started going digital, right? Mm -hmm. So just like, and, and then when internet came, everything caught internet on it, right? right. Now today, even when WhatsApp has there. Sure, internet, right? yeah. cloud computing and yeah. everything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, so cloud actually started Put it, like eating all the software, yeah. all the software went inside the cloud yeah. or most of the software, right. right? And the next revolution, just like fire or electricity or internet, is the AI. Mm -hmm. And this thing, I believe, is probably 10x more impactful than any of those things individually. Uh -huh. right? uh, and the main reason behind that is that the the whole way that we we explain an economy or the size of the economy it's so we al al always say that the size of the economy is directly proportional to the amount of uh, work generated right but then again the work are like different values work yeah. right you could be in the service industry uh, and do probably less work but more impact so what i'm talking about is the like work or impact right you can do high value work or mm -hmm. lower value work right mm -hmm. So the amount of value generated is the total size of the economy. And before the like automation era or before robotics, we used to think that whoever has the biggest manpower is the biggest economy. Right? Mm -hmm. And then automation happened. We started automating things, right? And then we thought that, okay, whoever has the best systems is the biggest economy, right? Mm -hmm. And then we saw that... Um, so countries like U.S., which always want to, they have like a very small population size, right? But they are able to stay on the top of the world. If you look at America's economy today, it's 25 trillion, that biggest economy in the world. And second biggest economy is China, that's 18 trillion. Mm -hmm. There's a huge gap there. There's mm -hmm. a 7 trillion gap, mm -hmm. right? And then I think third is India, that's uh, I think 12 trillion or something, mm -hmm. right? So... So the reason U.S. is the biggest economy is because it is doing the most amount of high-value work, so mm -hmm. right, like connecting the internet to the world, mm -hmm. right? And then once they have the internet, they can actually sell the internet services to the entire world. Sure. So like Google is pumping in money to United States from all over the world, right? Mm -hmm. Meta is pumping in money from all over the right. world. Even like computer companies like Dell, yeah. these are like pumping in from all over the world. And so, Amazon, <laughs> and their yeah. servers. Their yeah, yeah, exactly. Cloud computing systems, yeah. Yeah, so um, so these are just like higher and higher value uh, work. So w what we have seen is that every time there is a technological revolution, the first movers are the ones that take advantage of it. And America has been pretty good at that, you know, mm -hmm. every technological shift. They have been able to jump on it and then work on it fast. 
I'm not seeing the same speed in AI though, mm -hmm. like when it comes from the government, because the forefathers of America, the people that have built this country, mm -hmm. they actually had eyes on what is the most like high value work that we can do and make mm -hmm. the most money. Right? Mm -hmm. But I can actually see that there are a lot many other countries that are moving really fast mm -hmm. when it comes to AI, sure, and not US. But anyways. Uh, actually like going back to uh, working for these companies like Micron and Intel and then working with the enterprise customers who are building everything from satellites to automotives mm -hmm. to you know like software like cutting edge research I started looking at what are the biggest workloads and where is the workload going right of the compute mm -hmm. of, like we say that okay we're doing everything in cloud so what is actually cloud doing right, right. like and then I looked at that the biggest acceleration was for AI workloads, right? That a lot of data is there, it has already been harvested, and now it needs to be looked at because it would not make, economically, it would not make sense for companies to employ like a couple thousand people and look at that data. It's mm -hmm. just not worth it, right? Mm -hmm. Because who knows what you might find in that data, right? It would be like a gamble, but deploying an AI system to look at the data and then give you results like pretty quickly and then those results are actually the uh, decision factors those actually impact your mm -hmm. decision and that's what we call like data driven decisions right so uh, we started seeing that data driven decisions uh, started becoming more and more better after we started analyzing like all of the big data and everything that we had stored forever but we just did not have means to look at it, yeah. and it was not economical enough. And all of a sudden, AI algorithms and models can come, they can just analyze the data and give you uh, a lot of value, which actually basically like helps you decide how to steer my company or my organization or even my product, like how, how to build my product. The one point you bring up is so important is, we had collected massive amounts of data but the, it was in a relatively unstructured form. And yep. we didn't have something that said, look at this and analyze it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now we do. And I, I thought of another metaphor. Uh, I don't know if you're old enough to know about slide rolls. But, you know, mm -hmm. when you did the slide roll, you still were kind of like they, the calculator came in and you're estimating and then cross-checking. Uh -huh. we, we, we do yeah. have to have systems that are checking this data oh, yeah. because... Yeah. You know these uh, these deep structures. We don't have complete understanding of all the sub aspects of it. And uh, I just remember the idea of working with a, a slide rule to estimate and then cross checking the systems on it. But that's the biggest thing. And we had a a real AI winner. I mean, a lot of the concepts that are being implemented now were developed a long time ago. But the processing power wasn't there. The the data wasn't there, and yeah, and, and I think that's an important piece to to realize that it's kind of like a critical mass: the processing, the amount of computing, and yeah. and the data all coming together. Yeah, and also cost of computing. Yes, uh, always going down, right? Yeah, so, um, because the the power, compute power of chips generation over over generation they are. Uh, getting better and better by like 20 to 30 percent mm -hmm. and that's a very very fast rate right? mm -hmm. so yeah. uh, you are basically doubling in compute capacity almost three to four years right? yeah so 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 if you're paying the same amount of money for the double the compute right. then the cost of computes is speaking yeah. half right so yeah so yeah so, so cost of compute has gone down the other big part of compute of cost of compute is cost of electricity right and looks right. like with the new like solar revolution and uh, even maybe nuclear reactor right like nuclear yeah. power electricities yeah. uh, I think those will bring cost of electricity to near zero yeah so cost to power uh, these AI algorithms will also go to near zero one day yeah what we're seeing now is I think every news media on the planet goes, this is our chance to get people's attention again with clickbait. You know, <laughs> so, you know, in fact, I think there are two science fiction movies coming out, something about AI going astray, you know. I, it, it, I really want to talk about the hype versus the utility 
because we've got most people at least have heard of ChatGPT. <laughs> there, a lot of people are hearing about Google Bard, and of course, then we of course have the Bing, which draws on the ChatGPT, the Bing Chat, and those are the most common available to the average person. But you know, this is something that's filled with misinformation, people running to get funding quick, to act like it's bigger than it was. Just like the first AI, some of that was statistical data and not real AI. So I'd like to talk about the hype versus the reality of where we are today. Yeah, so I was actually in a meeting with an investor, not for my company, but for a friend's company, uh, a few days ago, last week, actually. And, uh, he was telling me that AI is where uh, blockchain or cryptocurrency were in 2013. And I was like, oh, do you mean technologically, like where they are at the time? And he was like, no, uh, the scam level and hype mm -hmm. and all of that. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, right? yeah. So yeah, I mean, it is like very true. I get, my LinkedIn is bombarded by yeah. messages from all of these AI companies. Yeah. And then, I don't really respond to a lot of these uh, messages, but sometimes I feel like, okay, let's look into what their system is because they could be like real AI too. A lot of time I see that a lot of salesmen are using this term AI yeah. and saying that, hey, my, my software has AI, even though <coughs> yeah. it might not. But a lot of time when I look at their system and I'm like, explain me what your system does and right. what exactly is your model what is your data source and things like that and then when I look inside it's just a bunch of if else statements. So, right, so, right, conditional so, statements. Yeah. We learned that in interpretive basic, I yeah. think, or Fortran, right? So I just tell That's them, right. Like, yeah, you C are, plus plus, right. Yeah. You are making like some decisions based on inputs. Right. But this is not exactly it. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So but then again, uh, what we're looking at is the products from OpenAI or even Google. Yeah. Some of the other like startups too, so like Stable Diffusion was a yeah. startup, right? And I mean, even OpenAI was was a startup. So so there are like some startups that have created uh, some real solution. So I think uh, the biggest technological revolution inside the AI boom right now is LLMs. Uh -huh. These large language models that have the information. It has a so what they have done is they have ran like crawlers to crawl. Uh, across the internet and then it has slurped in every data that it has found, right? So it has data and the internet has all kinds of data, right? Yeah. There are blogs on everything, it's news articles that is like open, right? right? Like people write scientific papers that are open. So uh, the model behind ChatGPT has just consumed all of the data till 2020, is it 2021 or 2020? 21. 21, right, yeah. yeah. And then the fact that it can have a conversation with you, you know, yeah. that's a pretty cool uh, advancement. So I think LLMs have, uh, I mean, whatever we're seeing, these are like, uh, even though it's called like GPT-4, I still call these technologies like level one uh -huh. uh, LLMs, yeah. right? <clears throat> so in the level one, Google Bard or even Chat GPT by OpenAI, these are pretty good uh, advancements. These are like your iPhone first generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we still have to see what is iPhone uh, twelve or uh, iPhone fourteen is the like latest one, right? right. So, so we still need to see iPhone fourteenth version of this uh, GPT technology, mm -hmm. right? And the other thing is we have seen from we have seen GPT, uh, which is basically for viewers that don't know what GPT is, is generative pre-trained transformer. So basically, what, whenever you provide an input, based on your input, it is able to pull up the information from its uh, pre-trained model, basically, and then give you the information in a way that is human readable, right? So it has two-way NLP, it understands NLP, and then yeah. it also processes its data in natural language and then feeds it back to you. And it is cool how it runs it out one word at a time. I explain yeah. to people, this is not a parlor trick. It's actually generating, it's you know, yeah. that's the yeah. thing to understand. It's not like the old world of going out and searching. It's generating, and hopefully it generated enough of the data so it's not plagiarizing either along yeah. the way. Yeah, so it's not, 
it's not plagiarizing. It just understands how like language happens, meaning mm-hmm. like, how humans talk. Yeah. So so it understands like how humans talk in English, right? Yeah. So just by reading like probably like uh, trillions of lines mm-hmm. uh, on the human conversation, it just like knows after this word what word is the best mm-hmm. probable word. Mm-hmm. So that's why you see that it is generating like one mm-hmm. by one. Yeah. Because that's how, that's exactly how the algorithm is working. So one really good feature that these LLMs have is that they know what word would be the best word. Mm-hmm. And that, I mean, the, the reason that I say, is, say that is the most important feature because that's the work that it is doing. It is generating mm-hmm. a sentence for you and it has to know what is the next uh, mm-hmm. word, right? So like when I say my name is Ujwal, I, I'm saying my name is Ujwal. Right. But for me, the whole sentence comes, right? Yeah. But to these language models, they don't have the whole sentence come to them. It's uh-huh. like one word. Then what's the best word? But every time it uh, provides you uh, the next next word in a sentence with like 80 to 90% plus accuracy, right? mm-hmm. that it makes sense. Mm-hmm. So... But these will be more and more advanced. So we can just see the difference between GPT-3 and GPT-4 mm-hmm. is that GPT-3 was really verbose. So it would mm-hmm. like give you a lot of, it would have a lot of, you know, like information that even if it was not there, it would have been okay. You know, so right. verbosity was really, really high. And just from GPT-3 to GPT-4, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's 60% less verbose and more succinct and uh-huh. more efficient. Right. How it is talking. So for them, it's just, uh, you know, like model adjustment. They adjusted the model to decrease the verbosity. So I think one day these LLMs can become like how a perfect, you know, well-grounded, conscious and aware human talks. Mm-hmm. You know, because you can you cannot program that into a human being. But mm-hmm. you will be able to program that into your models. Mm-hmm. You know, like you cannot ask, like let's say someone just like does a lot of small talk or talks mm-hmm. a lot. You cannot like teach them to speak less. Right, right, <laughs> right. All of a sudden, like yeah. next generation or right. next week, it'll have to be a practice for yeah. them. Yeah, get to the point faster, right? Yeah. Or, I mean, it'll, it'll have to be a practice for them if they agree with yeah, you. Yeah, right, right, right. Most right, of the right. time, they will not they agree with yeah. you. But with the model, uh, you can actually create. Uh, like how to talk and not just that I mean that is just one example even I think uh, I know that a lot of people might hate me for saying this but I think uh, the future of salesmen is language models Mm -hmm. because you have good salesmen in a company Mm -hmm. you have bad salesmen and good salesmen and bad salesmen does not just exist in like one to one like Mm -hmm. you know like in person uh, meetings Mm -hmm. but also on the internet you know Mm -hmm. like someone can be a really good salesman on the internet right and someone can be a really bad salesman on the internet, right? Mm-hmm. So what is the difference between a good salesman and a not so good salesman, right? Uh, the difference is how they approach, how they talk, right? So you can actually uh, collect the data on good salesmen, also collect the data on bad salesmen, and teach your model not to do things that are done by bad. Yeah, salesmen. no, that's a that's <laughs> and, a such an important thing because. How they present the words, how they deliver, yeah. their sense speaking in a sense of authority, all those aspects yeah. now can be a sentiment analysis is available today, which is amazing. And then you, like you said, you can take the base of who are the top performers, who are not, who are getting the most results. Mm-hmm. You do need to supervise it. And that's where your group could come in and go, <laughs> let's, let's make sure we're, we don't have some inappropriate biases occurring. Mm-hmm. And then uh, start producing script contents and data or evaluations even. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that's true. So, so yeah, I actually believe that there will be a lot of different kinds of uh, roles that even humans are performing right now. Uh, AI could do, I wouldn't say like, they would do the entirety of the work, mm-hmm. but at least like having conversation for a salesman. Yeah. So it would not like replace, maybe it will replace like uh, bad salesmen mm-hmm. right, who are not like well performers, but uh, it will be a weapon or it will be a tool.
tool right? mm -hmm. in the tool chest for sales people yeah right that uh, so in real life a good salesman can talk to like one person at a time right but you can train the sales bot mm -hmm. to be to act like a salesman like you mm -hmm. and it can be selling uh, on the internet to millions of people simultaneously at the same uh -huh. time sure and uh, if you are a good business uh, <coughs> you would actually employ the top sales bots right? right like who are the sales bots who are performing the best right, right? and then uh, that again that does not mean that you would replace your sales team but you would actually give that army of sales bots to your sales people right so that they're amplifying your business and accelerate their learning too i mean yeah. the way to learn faster and operate more efficiently but yeah. i also think there's a human condition where a person needs to really decide what are they best at and then honing that skill and then the people who may not be as good sales professionals it might be a support role or something to move to so i think you're bringing up a good point of it can help them accelerate so companies are going to have a choice to either replace that bad salesman with a good saleswoman <laughs> right. or AI, right? right? right. <laughs> to some extent. That's right, that's right. Yeah. At least given the opportunity to improve yeah. through, I was thinking the AI. same thing. You know, going back to, you mentioned about the history of technological advance and um, how AI is kind of everywhere now. I mean, yeah. 60 Minutes did about 30, 40 minutes on it yeah. a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Those of us who've been using chat GPT are getting a real wake up call that this is now front and center and real practical for us to use mm -hmm. that particular tool. But it really has been dormant for what, 15 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, are you seeing like a lot of other use cases beyond just the, the language models, you know, some of the air, other areas of AI? Uh, kind of cooking in too as a result of this. I mean, we've had the robotics for a while, but that's even going to improve, right? If you have existing robotics with this, with these new mo new advances, robotics will be even better. But deep learning and neural net networks and all these other things that we hear these terms, we're wondering how will those be deployed and when into yeah, business? So I think uh, it has already started. So we, you're right, we had robotics before. But we did not have a large language language model before. So now what you can do is you can put large language model on top of that robotic. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the same robot, robots are able to talk to humans much better. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. so, Great example. So, so that's a big uh, advancement. The other thing that, that we're seeing, I mean, when we're talking about robotics, uh, the biggest uh, technological uh, driving factor in, in robotics uh, that is hindering its success mm -hmm. is I would say battery technologies because mm -hmm. battery technologies are not as advanced as I know that material science uh, you know people mm -hmm. are working hard I, I'm not trying to say that oh you guys are like I'm yeah, not right. doing them right. out but it's just that where uh, software and hardware are today mm -hmm. Like we don't still have the level of batteries that would like sustain that amount of you know like data processing and all of that, like different motors like running to make it really agile. You know? mm -hmm. So that is one of the hindering factors. But with the advancement of technologies like solid state batteries, mm -hmm. right? Like there are some uh, public companies that are building it. One of them is QuantumScape. It is funded by Bill Gates. So with the advancement of battery technologies and the uh, AI in the software that we're seeing, and also there are advancement in uh, hardware, like we have better servo motors, right? We have better uh, control systems, right? So all of those things combined, even for the connectivity, things like 5G, right? And uh, also, so for robotics to be like really, really smart, the environment has to be smart too, so mm -hmm. that it can interface with this environment, right? So things like uh, attaching IoT systems all over the city to make cities smart, right? Mm -hmm. Smart city. So in that case, uh, I think uh, when we put all of this technology nodes together, w we can have like really advanced robotics like pretty soon. And I mean, Elon Musk is a pretty smart entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he has not just taught but also proven that to the world and him going into this robotics where now you can have uh, 
uh, robotic servant at your home, mm-hmm. right? They are just like serving you. They are there to mm-hmm. serve you. Sure. They have no human conditions, no ego, mm-hmm. right? It understands you very well because you can be sure that it will understand you very well because you can see how well ChatGPT understands you, yeah. right? So it will be able to understand you. It will be able to make like really complex moves that human body can make. Do laundry, full laundry, right? Mm-hmm. Clean, cook, all without like you know any kind of judgment or projections. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, robotics technology is going to be big in the AI revolution. Right? Well, that you know that gets back to you talk about both of you about the fears and the mm-hmm. hype. You know, my job's going to be eliminated. Um, the world's going to you know come to an end with super intelligence and, and AI and so forth. But it, you know, isn't it just for most cases, it's going to be an improvement in how we do our jobs? You know, yes, some jobs will be eliminated, but for most people, isn't it going to be, I just need to make some adjustments to a new technology? And in fact, um, instead of like having in the, in the old technological advances, you kind of had to go back to school intensively to retrain but it seems to me these technologies come out like i learned chat in about 15 minutes Mm -hmm. you know and it seems like it's along with this becomes more user friendly am i right about my hypothesis that this is not gonna cause massive layoffs it's it's you know across the board it's not going to eliminate all jobs it's going to just make modifications changes like we've seen in the past maybe new jobs even created as a result that we don't know about today can't imagine what those would be that may be more valuable you know for people yeah. to move into am i right about that or is that just dana's world so i think uh, in the beginning it will definitely like replace a lot of jobs. So I think people who are not very good at what they do, because AI is not very good at like doing things yet. Like it is not as good as the top performers in a company, right? right. For like any kind of task, but it is, uh, it is a not good employee. You know, like AI today is a not good employee. Mm-hmm. Like, it's an employee. You mm-hmm. can employ it to do tasks, mm-hmm. but it's not that good. So if you have a not good employee. And uh, if you have AI, then you'll be able to replace them mm-hmm. with AI. And we can see that happening already. Like mm-hmm. Sure. When we hear that, oh, Meta is like laying off 10,000 people. Microsoft mm-hmm. is laying off 15,000 people. So they might say that it's because of recession. But uh, we can just see that Zuckerberg just announced that they're going to buy $10 billion worth of their stock back. Right, after doing all of the layoffs. Yeah, right, 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 right. And also yeah. we looked at meta earnings, like their uh, revenue growth is stellar. It's a stellar company. Mm-hmm. Cash reserves are amazing. They don't actually need to like let go of those people. Mm-hmm. And it's not a recession, it's actually AI advancement. You know? uh-huh. So mm-hmm. they have automated a lot of their work. Mm-hmm. And they can see that, okay, so this is actually doing a better work than a lot of people here. I see. So like, let's let them go because yeah. they were not even that focused. They were just like, they were not high performers. Mm-hmm. So a lot of companies starting from the technology industry mm-hmm. will only want to keep their high performers and, and they will let other people go mm-hmm. because AI will, the rate at which AI will advance because right now it's not a, not so good employee. Mm-hmm. I love right. that. What a great way to explain it. Too. And... Uh, since it will advance really fast, it will start eating up into mediocre yeah. employees. Yeah, right, right. right. And well, there's a few of those. I think at the end it will become the uh, tool for like top go- top guys. Right. And to you work can just with. deploy like a thousand sales bot simultaneously. Go sure. sell for me, right? Wow. And then mm-hmm. all of the data analysis and reporting and everything. You don't need humans for that. Mm-hmm. It will be able to report you, and. The best thing is that a human employee, sometimes they can be like self-improving, mm-hmm. but I think corporations or their leaders have to invest in them to like improve mm-hmm. them. You know, like you have to train them, things like that. And you have to like, you know, push them. Right. Through, right? right. Sometimes they might not want to improve, right? But these systems are actually self-improvement systems, right? Yeah. So like if you have a sales funnel, that is exactly doing what a salesman in your company would do, right? right? And a lot of time, uh, selling is with conversation, right? And conversation is about all about conversation in sales. I think not general conversation, but in sales, 
uh, you want to make that person feel good yeah right on the other right. side <laughs> and not everybody has that you mm-hmm. know trick some good sales people have that but not everybody does but in this and also like humans do not learn like if we look at like how mm-hmm. humans live they don't even learn from their own mistakes they yeah right making like mistakes they like to repeat them i yeah. think it's every 80 years the entire human <laughs> race is going to yeah. cyclically repeating stuff yeah but yeah, i mean s- some humans improve but a lot of humans are like no i'm fine right and yeah. I, mm-hmm. I don't even want to improve or it's not even about like them like not wanting to change it's, it's just that change is hard and other thing mm-hmm. is Self-realization is not common. So not everybody like, mm-hmm. self-realizes, oh, yeah. I have like these shortcomings and I need. Yeah. But an AI system will be actually designed for that. Right. Like you can provide a command, self-improve, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it will start self-improving and just like increasing the bottom line of your business again and again. So yes, AI will create layoffs, right? But it will be a slow change uh, in the beginning. And uh, I believe that... Um, probably like 95% of the work done by humans will be fully automated in next um, 20 uh, years. Mm-hmm. Maybe like I'm being like to um, narrow it that. Maybe it is 10 to 15 years. Mm-hmm. Right? Sure. So, so yeah, I, I definitely believe that AI system will, will replace uh, human employees for sure. Well, an example is if you've got hundreds of doctors analyzing data. And now we can train the very best and get down to a handful of those doctors analyzing the data where it says, oh, we think there's cancer here. Now we need human interaction. That's different than having to have a doctor look at every single patient, you know, and have a threshold where you move in. So I think that's what we're going to find. I mean, there are law firms that for a while have been going, They have a room full of attorneys training the system. And as it gets better, they have less attorneys in that office training the system. I mean, that's been already going on for a while. So I I think you're right. I think the key for humans is find what you're best at and get better at it and keep improving. Yeah, and that's how we biologically compete. And it's not what we're accustomed to a lot of times. Yeah, and actually, you know, know, like AI replacing, like AI systems, I should say, like replacing uh, human beings at work. I mean, right now we are just programmed in a way that, oh, you need to work all your life. That's how you find the sense of purpose. But I deeply believe, and I I could have this like really utopian or weird belief, but I believe that human beings are not born to just like, oh, you're born now and now you work, work, work Mm -hmm. for... uh, work for a living, you have to, you know, like, people are working in things that they, are, they don't even care about. I, I work at, like, Intel, I work at Micron. And these are, like, some of the top uh, companies building cutting-edge technologies. Mm-hmm. But most of the people that I was working with did not even care about those technologies. They mm-hmm. were just working because they have a family to feed, mm-hmm. feed right? Mm-hmm. And they did not even enjoy the work. They were stressed and things like that. So I don't think that that's the best way for humans to live. Just because, like, life is short and only come here once there are a few lucky ones who find their passion and then they're able to do that but most of the people are just working for money so i think uh, a better world will be in which work is done by uh, machines right like all of the work and uh, humans are just uh, at the working on the creative layer you know like so humans are directing the machines that do Mm -hmm. this do this make this for me right Mm -hmm. Do this for me, or and playing I, golf. <laughs> yeah, or playing golf. I mean, basically like following passion. And I think uh, g- going back to my comment regarding economy. What is an economy? Right. right. Economy is the amount of value created, right? Yeah. Uh, in right. a system. So, like in the American system, whatever amount of value we're creating for the Americans and the world, that is the size of the economy, right? Mm-hmm. So, if AI systems are creating value for you, then you will still have an economy, right? And you'll still have money. So you can just like distribute that money by you. I mean, the government can distribute that money to general public through something like UBI. I think they did a small test of UBI during coronavirus, the mm-hmm. stimulus check. Yeah. Sure. So they have the system in place to start distributing UBI yeah. when that thing happens, right? Yeah. But yeah, I, I think that that would create a better world. It might be, you know, like in the beginning, since that will be like change in way people are living now in right. a long time, uh, th- there might be some hiccups 
in the beginning, but eventually uh, that'll just be the way of life. I want to talk about one of the other exciting frontiers in AI. My stepson's a senior data sci scientist, and he was talking about the frontier of interface with video, text, audio, and creating things, where all of those are merging together, mm -hmm. and that many of the newer, I'm going to say newer algorithms, new, newer um, models and systems are are in that domain where it's not just voice, it's not just video, it's how do we integrate all of those uh, together. And I think that's an exciting next frontier oh, yeah, that, uh, that that's uh, right. we're seeing, you know, and that will fit into the augmented reality. Mm -hmm. I just saw there's a new game machine that's going to make it where instead of a possible script, the characters, the independent characters you're interacting with can follow all types of new dialogue real time the <laughs> liquor so you go to the bartender one time and talk to him it could be a different conversation in the game than someone at some other time and allowing for uh, this integration of all those things i think is going to be very important love your comments on that yeah sure so i mean we're definitely driving towards that so the future will be uh, i mean the the systems will the systems of future will be interoperable, right? So they will be able to talk to each other. So like if a smart car or a, like Tesla car or BMW electric car is driving through the road, it will be able to talk to every traffic light that is nearby to, mm -hmm. right? Or not just traffic light, like so many sensors in, 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 mm -hmm. in the city. So everything will be able to talk to each other and data will like cross flow. And uh, there will be systems that will be built by augmenting all of these things together. And I mean, that's what I, I think we'll call artificial general intelligence, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. there is an intelligence of a city, mm -hmm. right? Or there is an intelligence, uh, a city. So uh, the way a mayor is running city right now right. will be so vastly different uh, yeah. when a mayor will be running an AI city, right? right. Where the city itself is, because a city in its own generates a lot of data, where yeah. it's not collecting it does not mean that the data is not being generated right? right like there is like traffic light data like how many people are walking on the like what street right where are people gathering right where are the heat maps in the city right where crime is, maps yeah crime map you know? where is more oxygen concentration in the city yeah. where is more carbon dioxide yeah. where are the emissions right like there are like so many kinds of data what are the different waves and rays in this city, right? Are, are those like harmful rays, harmful waves, right? Mm -hmm. What are the kinds of infrasonics and ultrasonics noises mm -hmm. the, the, the city is creating, mm -hmm. right? So like when we have like these kinds of like awareness and sensing data from the city, like so many things can be solved, you know, like crime will be handled so differently because there will be system that will do like early detection and prevention. The police will know ahead of time that the crime crime is gonna go like happen over there. They will pull up ahead of time. Right, right. And criminals right, right. will just go home. Right? I think there was so, a Tom Cruise movie on that. <laughs> so yeah, so the future is of the connected systems yeah. and like how a human being lives in a city or how their house sits in a city, mm -hmm. right? How different appliances are built, like all of that data, like all the way up to like how the city is distributing electricity, power, mm -hmm. you know, like managing crime, everything that a city like all the activities that is being done all of these things can be data driven in the same case also in the software world right mm -hmm. like all of the software will be able to talk to each other through apis and webhooks mm -hmm. and uh, there will be a general intelligence mm -hmm. right now networks are like siloed out mm -hmm. but i think uh, in future even the governments will see that oh there's benefit in that mm -hmm. so let's do that right? sure i mean most people don't realize most cities their lighting system is controlled by uh, you know a remote system monitoring electricity and power and all of those mm -hmm. but like you said they aren't working together yet yeah they're not they're not in one dashboard yeah together yeah right? but yeah I, I think the future of uh, city management will be you just have like dashboard level control on like everything like water electricity air quality crime mm -hmm. like how kids get educated like mm -hmm. every i mean i'm just giving like some activities that come to my mind mm -hmm. but every activity that happens in a city the data can be collected on that and uh, analyzed and even, even the city can be designed in a better way you know yeah uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about 
what you see businesses are seeing as the pain point where you're starting to get involved with them? Because, you know, there's so many things your team can solve and help with, but we have to find where do they see the problem right now mm -hmm. and where are you starting to work with them and, and how are you approaching that? I think the biggest uh, problem that I'm seeing for businesses is that a lot of uh, a small to medium sized businesses believe that AI is only for like big enterprises. Mm -hmm. So AI is, oh, when we talk about AI to them, they're like, oh yeah, it's ad GPT, right? So right. AI is only for open AIs of the world right. or Google or Microsoft, Netflix, right? So only these com companies can afford AI. Uh, what they are not aware of is that the cost of implementing AI models and even like training, you know, like training a model has gone down significantly. Mm -hmm. So whatever cost Gartner had predicted that we'll get down to in 2030, we were able to achieve that in 2023 using Stanford's mm -hmm. Alpaca LLM. Right. Gartner has been like really accurate with their predictions. Mm -hmm. But but this technology is moving so fast, mm -hmm. we, did, we achieved that seven years ahead of its own prediction, right? That's amazing. So I think that the business owners, whether they are small business owners or medium-sized business owners, regardless of what vertical they are in, whether they are running a coffee shop or they are running a restaurant or they're running a mid-sized software company, it's a mm -hmm. SaaS company, right? Everyone can get benefit from AI today. AI mm -hmm. is not something for the future for them. And uh, businesses, uh, I think the biggest challenge is that the CEOs of the companies need to understand that, you know how like fire took a couple hundred years to uh, um, encapsulate the the whole world, mm -hmm. meaning like everyone so tool. finding out. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, the wheel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So people is like mass adoption for fire took a couple right. hundred years. Right. Mass adoption for electricity took eighty years. Mm -hmm. Mass adoption for internet took twenty years. Right. Right. I think the automobile was about fifty. You know, before yeah, yeah, yeah. you know yeah. from automobile the is, first one and then yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, for AI, uh, it's gonna be five years. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. because uh -huh. the distribution. Uh, systems are already uh, built, right? Yeah. And what, what I mean by that is the logistics, like how do you deliver an AI product yeah. to people's homes or like people's computers, right. like phones, right? You do it through internet. So highways are already built and you just yeah. ship it in real time. And what will happen is like how you saw that every, or not every, but a lot of analog uh, uh, devices that we're using, like for example, WADS, right? WADS used to be an analog mm -hmm. thing. It became digital. And just mm -hmm. like that, a lot of things, this microphone is digital, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the clock is digital, like everything mm -hmm. is digital now, sure. right? Just like that, in next five years, every software or hardware that exists among us will have some AI in it. There will be mm -hmm. some AI in this mic, there will mm -hmm. be some AI in this sunglasses, there will be some AI in your car, your yeah. computer, your mouse. So basically everything is digital, mm -hmm. will have AI in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and AI will touch the products that internet was not even able to touch. Internet, right. internet so, so the verticals where internet could not penetrate, AI will be able to penetrate there. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. And uh, there'll be things like edge AI, where AI will just run locally mm -hmm. with, with the local data, right? It does not even have to be hooked to some cloud, right? Because cloud computing is one thing, and edge computing is the other thing, right? So. So products like iPhones can do um, AI on the device using mm -hmm. its own chip, right? Right. And th these algorithms are getting more and more efficient. So AI de democratization will happen really, really fast. And the way it will work is, and this happens in every technological shift, mm -hmm. that the dinosaur or, or the like, you know, like older companies think that, oh, it's not like, you know, like their business is so big, it's not gonna get impacted, but there is a small startup like coming out of someone's garage and that comes up and boom, <laughs> it's that company, right? So like IBM is like, was like that and Apple was a garage company came out and then ate just because they did not jump on the yeah. personal compute uh, sure. revolution, yeah. right? So just like that, I, I actually talked to, to some CEOs that are like, nah, we don't need AI, right? right? And I'm like, no, that's just your opinion. The yeah. fact is that you need AI. Right? Yeah. Well, that kind of raises the point about some key takeaways, too, for businesses and professionals is 
don't put your head in the sand on this. Mm -hmm. yeah. You need yeah. to be open-minded about what the possibilities are because it could you, you, the, your comp competitor may be employing some of yes. these. Okay. Yeah. yeah, whether yeah. it's employee competitors or company or other companies if you're running a business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then also, I'm hearing like, yes, there could be some negative big picture things with supercomputing yep. someday that could go awry. Um, but with controls and carefulness, this could be a big plus for, for, for everyone. And it's really super important to, to be prepared to start l looking at what's out there. And then uh, another lesson I think I'm hearing is if you're going to invest in some of these companies, be, check them out thoroughly because yeah. some, we know through history that some will be more hype than they yeah, are we substance. have ai yeah, yeah, yeah. fortified yeah. with red sand you know <laughs> what, uh, what's so that you gotta we, look we invented the word so you, you know? gotta look under the hood yeah, yeah right yeah. Uh, before you yeah. take the leap yeah, yeah. So, yeah that is true yeah uh and one closing example i'd love to take is uh Let's pretend I've got a company and I'm a sales support for medical companies. So mm -hmm. I'm like a massive, I do the marketing and sales support. What might be a way I could work with you uh, to be more effective and use AI? Because like you said, it doesn't have to be online. We could have a computer in our office mm -hmm. now with a model yep. that's analyzing our own data. People don't realize that. And that's not real expensive. Mm -hmm. So let's pretend I'm a, uh, I'm a support company. I do uh, sales and marketing for uh, pharmaceutical that want to just grab me for tasks. What might be a way that you all would be able to help out with that? So, I mean, our approach uh, to like anyone that we work with is that in the beginning, so, so like let's say that you have a salespeople team, right? A mm -hmm. team of salespeople that are every day, the task is to sell, right? Mm -hmm. and sell as much as they can, as fast as they can, right? So what we do is like we would uh, either find some AI system that would work with those salespeople or uh, if it does not exist for that particular ca mm -hmm. case, we would actually build the system and then give it in the hands of your salespeople that would uh, make them somewhere between 50 to 100x more efficient and get 15 to 100x more work done. So it's it, it's kind of like uh, you're asking your accountant to do your profit and loss calculation on a pen and paper right? versus an Excel spreadsheet. Right. Uh, so yeah. it's like the, the efficiency there is like 100x, right? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. Someone like crunching in all the numbers <coughs> on the pen and paper for your entire business here filing taxes versus someone just put, putting it either in like systems like QuickBook or like Excel spreadsheets, right? Yeah. And then getting the work done, right? So what it means is that with Excel spreadsheet or QuickBooks, the same accountant can get much more work done. It's not that they're just gonna work now one day a week. Right. They will just do more business, right? Yeah. Uh, if, if they're a freelancer, but if they're an employee, they will just drive up the business like yeah. 200 X because now they are using tools uh, that, that are like just amplifying. So so AI will amplify human beings actually. Um, so I think that it will amplify human beings in every way. There are a lot of like negativities uh, around it, but I think if we if, if the governments take action and then regulate AI and then policymakers understand you know like how to ethically move AI forward. Yeah. And also put the controls in the human's hands, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe like there is one policing body, which is the government. That's why we have the government, right? mm -hmm. because every company can be doing their own little thing. Mm -hmm. But the government is the main central entity to like regulate everybody and make sure that someone is not just cutting corners, right? So I think that we have something for humanity that is as important as fire or electricity, mm -hmm. and we are about to move into a different era. So we should actually be like really, really careful, but also like considerate towards the technology. Technology itself is not bad, right? Right. It's like you can have a knife, you can cut vegetables, or you can kill someone, right? Yeah. So you cannot really blame the technology that yeah. is knife. Right. It is cooking food in so many houses, right? Right. But uh, it's just that I mean, there is police that is making sure that someone does not stab someone else with a yeah. knife, right? So those kinds of systems need to be placed from the government side, yeah. from the oversight. Yeah, excellent. How can people learn more about you and what you all do? 
Um, so I would say go to scalebuild.ai and uh, you will be able to see all of the services that we provide. You can also directly reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, I, I, I think LinkedIn would be a good way to reach out. Uh, you could reach out to me via my email too. So we'll, we'll put Roy on LinkedIn yeah. and scalebuildai.com. No, scalebuild.ai. Scalebuild.ai. Okay, excellent, excellent. Well, this was really terrific and yeah. look forward to getting you back again and and uh, seeing what's new and seeing what's new. Two weeks. Weeks. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, but tomorrow. We'll give, it, <laughs> we'll, we'll give it a long time before we meet again. Maybe two weeks, right? <laughs> what's like, changed? It's like two decades. It's in the like world open AI. up the computer. <laughs> okay, the writers are worried they're going to be replaced. Oh, the companies are hiring AI companies the next day. Don't worry. Oh, right. I hope I didn't uh, wow. scare anybody. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think listening. we should be. Yeah, but. It's just like I mean, like fire. Let's. Yeah. I love your analogy. You know, you, you you fire is something you should res learn to respect and understand, mm -hmm. not just run from, not just hide from. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where you started with. And I think that's the a good metaphor yes, for yes. AI is it can burn down the house, but it also can cook food for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and and we have to think and learn and get educated on what are the tools and and what to look out for the danger signs that really it's the cons and educating people. So becoming educated is core. Well, great. It was terrific having you. Thanks so much. Senator, thanks for having me. Really enjoyed it. Thanks. Yep. It's been great. Okay, good. Have any space left on your phone?